SPACs were going belly up. IPOs, we weren't seeing many interesting companies going public. US stock market is one of the biggest stock market all around the world. Hi, welcome to Outlier Live. So IPOs, uh, it was year 2022. I was sitting with a group of uh, business owners. We were discussing about SPACs, we were discussing about IPOs. There was this common concern then. Uh, SPACs were going belly up. IPOs, we weren't seeing many interesting companies going public that year. So there was this, this concern that, okay, if IPOs will be back again, right? And looks like it's year 2023 and I am seeing a lot of interesting companies going public. So let's talk about IPOs today. So US is, has always been a hotspot for companies to list themselves, go public, raise money, uh, just because US stock market is one of the biggest stock market all around the world. So there is no doubt that a lot of companies, not just from United States, you know, of course, there are a lot of companies from other part of the world, they prefer US stock market to list their companies to raise money. Right now, what I am seeing uh, a recent trend that a lot of Southeastern Asian, Southeast Asian companies are trying to list on US stock exchange. Uh, you have seen there has been some geopolitical change uh, there were a lot of Chinese companies. They were listing on U.S. stock exchange. But most recently, uh, there has been a pause in a in lot of Chinese companies going public on U.S. stock exchange. Uh, so that gap is being filled by some of the other uh, companies from com countries like Indonesia, um, Singapore, and few other few other uh, few other uh, places few other uh, countries so what i was looking at there were some recent announcement by this vietnamese internet company uh, vng corporation and philippines real estate company us stock exchange and i'm also seeing some announcements from uh, Singapore-based companies, uh, a Thai insurance technology uh, company, they are discussing about their plans. They may go, uh, they may list on US stock exchange, so we will know. So again, looks like a lot of IPOs happening in 2023. And I was looking at the calendar. So Instacart is, is going... Uh, uh, public, I think probably it went public, I think yesterday. Um, we saw ARM Holdings uh, went IPO uh, last week. So we'll talk about ARM in a second. But if you look at 2023, I'm seeing there are a lot of companies. Turo, you know, probably you know about this uh, car uh, renting app where you can, you know, rent a car from some other people like who owns these cars, uh, Clavio, uh, a company around email marketing and all that. So there are a lot of companies that are going public this year. I mean, 2023 is becoming one of those uh, years when IPOs are coming back again. So which is very, very interesting. And I have always been fascinated by IPOs. But what I have personally found that, uh, you know, uh, after looking at many IPOs, uh, that you know you should be very very careful about IPOs. There is a chance that four out of five IPOs you may not make money in those. And this is not me just talking about it. This is one of the uh, research studies that has been done uh, in Wharton School. So this guy um, Jeremy, he actually looked at around 9,000 stocks that went public since 1968. So the study assumed that each stock was bought at either the offer price 
or at the end of the first month of trading and was held until the end of 2003. So these are the findings. So the finding may shock you as IPOs were found to underperform the market by an average of two to three percent. So which is which is very true. This is a very, very common phenomenon. Like people get excited about IPOs, but really how the company will perform, you know, how the market will react, how investors will react to that company. It's really when they when they go public, they are when they are uh, uh, they actually start disclosing, you know, their financials. They start disclosing about you know other changes within the company, their approach, how they are selling, uh, things like that. They start talking about risk. It's then uh, the uh, they will see the, the you know the the real uh, performance. Uh, of, of that company. So I have seen that a lot of companies, uh, if you are like, okay, yeah, this is a great company. I want to buy in, right? When when it goes live, most of the time, you know, when you, you know, buy on that first day or within first month, right? You may not be buying at the, you know, uh, a good price. It may be already overvalued, right? Because all of the investors who have invested before, like they are just waiting to liquidate. They are waiting to make money. So you may be buying off of them and there is a very high probability. You know, it's not just me. It's, you know, the data which says that the stock may drop, right? And what happens is that you panic. Like as an individual investor, what happens is when things don't go your way, you tend to overreact. And, uh, you know, sometimes reacting, it's not bad because if the company is not doing good, Cutting the losses is always a good idea. But if the company is good, so the companies like, for example, Meta, right? Facebook, great company in terms of performance, right? Um, and, and few other companies are, are there which have done phenomenal from the day they went public. So I would say there, there are certain companies, there are few companies that are great. You know, you, you need to know, you need to know uh, what they are doing, what line of business they are in whether this business is going to skyrocket, whether this business is going to stay relevant, right? For example, um, I, I talked about Instacart in my in my last uh, live video. I personally think that uh, grocery uh, delivery business, it's a very high risky business. Why? Uh, there, are, there are a lot of companies which are going to pose as threat to Instacart, for example, Amazon, Walmart, you know, Walmart is very big in groceries. So, so I, I feel like um, when Instacart, uh, you may see the the drop in Instacart uh, stock price when they go live, when they go IPO, uh, and and I think that is the similar trend I am seeing in in some of the other companies. For example, Redfin, it went public in year two thousand seventeen, right. <sighs> I knew a lot of real estate professionals at that point of time. I was, you know, involved in some of these these things, and I was talking to some some of the some of the investors who were very very excited about Redfin because they they knew personally a lot of agents working for Redfin. You know, they were they had you know big ideas that hey Redfin is gonna just just skyrocket and it's gonna keep going up and up and up because this thing is like they literally control the market they have a lot of agents and all that but if you see that over period of years it has not performed good so this is just one example i'm picking up yes there are companies which have done great so there are a lot of mixed examples but overall if there is one successful company one successful ipo you may see there are like four unsuccessful ipo so you need to be very very careful with the due diligence like where you are investing at least that's what I would personally do is I'll just wait for a few years for actually company to to see where the price is going to be, how the performance in last three, four, five years, and then probably consider that, uh, you know, to invest in. Because in the end, my goal is, you know, to invest money, not to get excited about, you know, a certain company um, and oh yeah, I want to just just throw money in it, even though if I'm losing money, I I don't want to do that. So that's just me personally. 